Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. I'm so glad that you're joining me here this morning and you're thinking, where is she? Well, actually, this is my home church. This is the Verona Free Methodist Church. This is the church that I grew up in and that is the very first pulpit that I spoke from. My first sermon was on 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. Be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in every uh, circumstance. And so I preached that sermon right there, and, and this is my home church. And so I'm actually home visiting my mom for a few days, and so uh, the pastor, uh, Pastor Kathy, very graciously said, yes, you can use our Wi-Fi. And I said, thank you. So uh, whenever I come home, I like to bring my mom something whether it's besides me, of course. Um, so some sort of treat of some kind, whether it's a Sudoku book or a bag of Werther's candies, like she, she likes things like that. Well, I've been having this conversation with her about salmon, and, uh, and she said to me the other day, she's like, salmon is just so expensive. And I said, really? Like, how much is it? She's like, it's $4 a can. And I was like, Mom, like, if you like it, you should just get it. She was like, oh, no, no, no like one can of week and and so she's always been very very good with money so I can totally understand uh, why she's only buying one can of week and and so I thought you know me being the good daughter or at least trying to be a good daughter I would buy her a can of salmon and bring it home to her and so I you know I stopped at the store and and I walked down the fish aisle the canned aisle and I picked up salmon. I don't know if you can see that. So this is pink salmon, wild pink salmon, skinless, boneless. And I'm like, surely, like she's gonna be so excited when she sees this. And so I come home and we have supper and I get my can of salmon and I hand it to her and she looked at me and she's like, I'm like, it's for you, it's a gift. And she's like, oh. I was like, that was not the response I was hoping for. And I said, is there something wrong? She's like, I don't like pink salmon. I'm like, what? She's like, no, I like red salmon. I said, there's a difference? And she said, yes, there's a difference. She's like, I have a can, it's over there. So besides the size of the can, so this is sockeye salmon and this is pink salmon. And yes, there is a definite size difference. Um, and so I actually Googled it. I Googled this and I said, what is the difference between pink salmon and red salmon? First difference is pink salmon, I don't know if you know this, is actually two pounds lighter than red salmon or sockeye salmon. So I was like, okay. But secondly, the fat content in red salmon is much higher than the fat content in pink salmon. So that accounts for the taste difference. Uh, the taste of the pink salmon is, according to Google, is bland or very uh, light. It's a light tasting fish where the red salmon or the sockeye salmon has a, a much more robust flavor. <laughs> and so my, my dear mom, she's like, so do you want to take it back? <laughs> I'm like, she really must not like this. Um, and I said, well, she said, you know what, I'll, I'll put some sandwich spread with it and I'll make it up into, into like a, a salmon salad. And I was like, mm, okay. And, and so I'm like, there's got to be a devotion in this, right? And, and so I actually Googled salmon devotional because I thought there's gotta be something. And so as I did my research, I came across this story, and I know uh, we've talked about salmon before, about how they climb the ladder and and um, and the perseverance that they need, right? The pressing on that they need to actually get up the ladder to the place of spawning and how much endurance that takes, and we should have that kind of endurance. I'm like, okay, well, that's good, but we've already talked about that. And so as I'm just sort of <laughs> Google surfing, uh, I came across this story of how, and I didn't know this, but maybe you knew this, 
that salmon spawn in the exact same spot where they were born. Exact same spot. So wherever the salmon is born, they then go down the river. And for some, if they're in the eastern part of Canada, through the Great Lakes and out to the Atlantic Ocean, or if they're in the west, they go out to the Pacific Ocean. And then when it's time for them to spawn, they actually mi migrate, swim back, and they look for the exact river they came down and swim up into the exact stream to the exact spot where um, the gravel bed that they uh, were born out of. And it's kind of a mystery. Now, some of the research says that it's thought that maybe they rely on genetic coding or celestial navigation, which is kind of cool, so by the stars. Uh, and I'm like, how do they see the stars? But anyways, uh, elect but they can see in the dark, right? Technically. Um, electromagnetic current and a strong sense of smell. So it could be a combination of all four of those, but they get back to the exact same place, which I find fascinating. In fact, one study was done that uh, some of the eggs were, were taken out of the original place where they were, were laid and hatched somewhere else. And those fish, and I don't know how they figured it out, but they actually swam back to the exact same spot where the eggs were laid. Right? And the devotion went on to say, how amazing is it that God created salmon with this innate ability to know, to figure out the exact spot from which they came? Right? They, they're born, they swim down the river, they go out to the ocean, they come back from the ocean, and they actually swim along the coast until they, fi they find their street, right? They find their river, and they swim up to it. And whatever tributary, whatever um, creek is coming in, whatever other river, they can smell it or figure out along which one they should turn onto to get to the exact same spot. And then the devotion went on to say, how much more does God care for us, right? It goes back to that passage in Matthew where it says, you know, his eyes on the sparrow, how much more does he care for you? Not a single hair will fall from your head without him knowing it, right? And if, if the Lord can seek, so the, that, the other passage is talking about provision. So if the Lord if the Lord can, you know, wire in to a salmon how to find its way back home, isn't he much more interested in helping you find where you need to go to find your way home? And I was like, yeah, yeah, right? So often we stand in awe at nature and how God has created nature and for some reason, we, we don't get the connection. If that is how well he takes care of nature, how much more will he take care of us? Listen to some of these verses. Luke 1, 79, and this is Zacharias says, uh, Jesus came or is coming to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace right jesus actually came it says i'm the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life right jesus came to lead us out of darkness it goes on in john chapter 16 verse 13 it says when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So not only did Jesus come as the light of the world to lead us out of darkness, the spirit of truth, when we accept Christ into our life, comes inside and will lead us into all truth. It's like when the salmon is going along smelling, right? Nope. Nope. Yes, that's the right way to go. That's like the spirit of truth inside of us, giving us discernment that when we're having to make decisions, right, we come up to a decision and it's almost like with, I want to say, our knower, our internal knower, right? I know in my knower, you guys have heard me say that before. 
that we can sort of like bump up against a decision. We go, spirit? No. Okay. And we keep going, right? That's the spirit of truth. Um, and one of the key ways God uses to lead us is his word. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we can know 